All right, picking up on problem 26 of the 2017 practice exam, we have which of the following histograms could have been constructed from the same set of data summarized by the box plot given above? Okay, so remember what a box plot is. Box that shows percentages, 25%. Right here, we got the next 25%. And here to here, in the middle or the third 25 percentile, and then here to here, the, the top 25 percentile or the fourth. So know essentially that don't get confused by the like the length and like the intervals, because it's just, we don't know how many in, individuals are in this and are in each of these. We just know that 25% of the total. Um, but here we can calculate 25% of the total um, by looking at the frequency. So um, we want to see like where would 25%, but also even look, even at plus also even that, um, where would 25% of the total like be like from 35 to 45? Let's look at that first. Which of these would add up? Um, so the first one you can see is not even going to be close because that's saying that this is going to be only a fourth of all that, of all, all the rest. This is more than half already. So it's not going to be A. Um, definitely not A. Um, let's see. B. B. 25 percent remember so 35 to 45 the kind of still in the, in the running but now let's look at the 50 percentile 50 50 percent of it has to go up to 55 i mean so only 50 percent of the total is supposed to be from here to here this one is clearly not 50 percent so it's not going to be b it's way more than 50 percent of all the values all right c Going 25% up to 45. The next 25% is 55. The next 25% is 60. And then next is uh, up to 65 or 60, a little less than 65. We don't know for that one. We 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 can inspect it, but let's look to, let's look at an, another one if we can eliminate any of them. D will be 35 to 45, 55, uh -huh. okay, So this one also could be one of them. E, definitely not. You can just, 25% is not even here. Okay, so then down to C and D. Let's see which would work. Um, so, 25% of the data, it has to be from 35 to 45. So let's see, like, we want to see if all, so now I guess another way to look at it, like where it's divided at, at 45, 55, 60, and then 65, are all those have the same amount of values? Looking at this, we can kind of we can tell that this definitely has a lot less than this, and definitely a lot less than this. So you can do it that way. It's not going to be C. The answer is going to be D. But again, if you're taking a real test, let me just go through it. Otherwise, you got to skip ahead if you really got it. Um, like you could you could count actually. You can you can estimate two. This is probably six. Um, like another eight, maybe another six. Um, to 10, 11, 12, 20, maybe about each one about 22 ish. 20, I would probably say, even two, six, eight, um, 12, 13, 14, 20. Yeah, see, it looks about it looks like they're all going to be around 20 right here. 10. Yeah, that, this this one makes a lot of sense. That made for this last one. Let me see if I did that. Did I did this one right. Oh yeah, I didn't divide it right. Yeah, it's gonna be this. Yeah, see, it makes sense because um, this last one is again we can't tell the exact number, but the D would be the answer. And these ones, these ones are annoying, I would say, because they tend to take a long time. And yeah, it's like like is it worth it? But yeah. It is if you have the time. If it's if you don't, then just do your best and move on. Twenty-seven. 
Amateurs Men's Women's Association is trying to decide whether, I don't know why I, t- I have difficulty saying that, is trying to decide whether the times in the 100 meter breaststroke will be reduced if men shave their heads. I think they will be, but from the population of swimmers, six were selected at random and agreed to swim two races. One before shaving their heads and one after. Well, how much hair do they have to begin with? Um, the results for each race with times and seconds are given in this table below. So mu1 represents the population mean of swim times before shaving, and mu2 represents the population mean of swim times after shaving. But mu d represent the population mean of the differences x1 minus x2. These differences follow a normal distribution. Which of the following would be the most appropriate test and alternative hypotheses to use in testing this theory? Okay, so then you you basically want to um, you're going to want to assume that there is no difference. That then the null hypothesis would be that there is no difference, and the alternative would be that it, you swim faster with the shaved head, but when you swim faster, that means your time is less. So then, since there's time, the time with the shaved head is 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 the second time. You want to basically say that the um that the first time or mu one is greater than mu two. Now, what type of test do you use? Is it to be two sample or paired? That's the question. Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be paired because each person, each swimmer is gonna be against their own time. You don't want to have one swimmer's time like time be compared with another swimmer's time because then maybe they're maybe one is gonna one's probably more fast. It's the faster swimmer than the other one, regardless if they shave their head or anything so um pair t tests they're in pairs like they're you know they they're compared to themselves now so that means the difference would have to be greater because again we're doing the first time minus we're doing time one minus time two and this one will be we want this one to be greater because because that would take longer with the shaved head so be, so the answer would be d Twenty-eight. A newspaper poll found that fifty percent of the respondents in a large random sample of likely voters in a district intend to vote for Kent Smith rather than the opponent. Ninety-five percent confidence interval for the population proportion was computed to be 0.52 plus minus 0.42 well, plus minus 0.04. Based on the confidence interval, which of the following should the newspaper report to its readers? So plus point. So 0.52 plus minus point. Oh, 04. So we would then have 0.48 to 0.56. So what would they report? Smith will win because the majority of voters are in favor of Smith. Okay, I see what they're getting at. So remember, this is an estimate. And we don't know if that's a true percentage. And then they did they did this. Um, statistical test and found this common interval. Now, this means that any of these values could be the true value of you know, proportion. So even 0.48, it's not saying that like 0.52 is the most likely out of these. And it's that don't confuse that. Like, like that's usually where they'll try to confuse you and the students will mix it up. 0.4, if it, if, it, if it has anything below 0.5, and we can't say that that most that we can't say something like this. We can't say that the voters are going to vote for Smith. That Smith's most likely to win because we have some values that are below 0.5. It doesn't matter if it's not centered down there. Um, so it's not going to be a not a 90 percent chance. Of Smith, don't put B, please. Um, yeah, these are um. Interesting. The poll predicts Smith will win, but there's a 5% chance the prediction is incorrect due to sampling error. That's clever because I bet a lot of students will pick that because it's the longest one. Don't pick that one. And with 95% confidence, there's convinced evidence that Smith will win. So yeah, no prediction can be made. With an, yeah, see, you can't really make a prediction because the values are, you could have above and below the 0.5 mark. So it's like, it's pointless. Um, so yeah. Mating equals 
And 19 eagles typically have two baby eagles called eaglets when there are two eaglets. When the one mate, when there are two eaglets, the parents always feed the older eaglet until it has its fill. Then they feed the younger eaglet. That's kind of sucks for him. Okay, so this results in an unequal chance of survival for the two eagles, e eaglets. Suppose that the older eaglet has a 50% chance of survival. If the older eaglet survives, the younger eaglet has 10% chance of survival. If the, older, if the older eaglet does not survive, the younger eaglet has a 30% chance of survival. Let X be the number of eaglets that survive. Which of the following tables shows the probability distribution of X? Okay, so it's possible they both that they both die, or it's possible that one of them survives. You know, either the um, the older one or the younger one, or they both survive. So what I would recommend is the probability tree, because um, it takes a little longer, but it helps you get these problems and makes you makes it clear. Um, so the first branch will be that. Um, the the older eagle survives. So let's put like S dies. This is the, this is going to be the older one. Fifty percent chance that the older eagle dies or survives. Fifty fifty. Now the younger one is going to be the next branch. So it's also possible that they survive. And it's also possible that they die. And that goes for both. So the first one could die, the older one could die, and the younger one could survive or die. Now, if the older eaglet survives, which is this branch, the younger eaglet only has a point, or only has a 10% chance of survival. So we put 0 0.1 here, that means there's a 0 0.9 there. Now, if the older one dies, the younger one has a 30% chance of survival. So 0.3 goes here and a 0.7 goes here. So then now we have these possibilities. We got that they both survive, SS. We have SD, the first one survives, the older one survives, the, the younger one dies. Next one, the older one dies, the younger one survives, or they both die. So how do you find those probabilities? Remember, you multiply them across. 0.5 times 0 0.1, 0 0.05, right? 0 0.05, okay. 0 0.5 times 0 0.9, 0 0.45. 0 0.5 times 0 0.3, 0 0.15. And 0.5 times 0 0.7, so 0.35. So then to figure out, you know, if you want to look at what the probabilities are for w zero, one, and two eaglets surviving, then for them both, zero, z zero would be when they both die. That would be just be the 0 0.35. And that's all you have to do. And like, once you see that, you're good. Well, I'm just gonna finish the problem just in case because like it's gonna be C because none of the other ones even have 0.35. Um, one if one of them survives, it could be you know this or this 0.5 or this, so it'd be 0.45 plus a 0.15, the 0.6, and then um they both survive. That's only that's only gonna be the 0.05. Yeah, okay, cool. Probability tends to be hard to so really work your way through it, practice it. Um, everything is practice. Um, and this, uh, let's do 30. I'm, I'm gonna do this, do this one and then I'm gonna take a little break. Um, a statistics teacher wants to determine whether there's a linear relationship between high school students and high school students' heights and in inches and their lengths of their feet in centimeters. Yeah, of course there is. But anyways, the teacher obtains height and foot length measurements for a random sample of 23 students at the high school and generates the following graph and computer output. Okay, here's our data, here's our scatter plot. Here's our data. 
provided that the assumptions for regression and inference are satisfied, which of the following provides a 95% confidence interval estimate of the slope of the population regression line for predicting foot length from height. Okay, so remember like, um, like it's just usually at the end of the book, the last chapter, but you can you can have just a confidence interval for this is just a confidence confidence interval for slope, and we tend to use lowercase b for the slope and cal and statistics, and we're gonna have our t star times our standard error. I don't think this is in the it's like in the formula sheet like explicitly, but you know again you just. Try to think logically what would make sense. Yes, let me just look again. But I, I don't think they really would. Yeah, they don't really, they're not going to have that in that form. Um, yep. So, but um, again, just thinking logically, um, you can figure out like, First, like you're trying to estimate, you know, the foot length, that's our 0.583. And then the, the T star you should know because you're doing the 95% confidence interval, but you need the degrees of freedom to be N minus two. So you're gonna match up the correct T star. And once you get the correct T star, you're fine because you don't even need to know that. You could even, you could not even, you don't even need to be sure about the standard error because there's only going to be one of the correct T-stars here, which are the 2.08. So I guess there's a, there's a little trick. But let me see if I can show you on the... My table, where did it, where did it go? It fell on the ground. Hold on a second. All right, so on the table... Sorry about that. I'm, I'm dropping stuff. Um, so we look at remember this table where we got the degrees of freedom. We look at 21, row 21, and we want a 95% confidence interval. So we intersect this row with this one, and you got our 2.08 there. So luckily with that, you you already have the correct answer. All right, I'm gonna take a break. Um, but again, always leave me feedback, um, whether good or bad, just to help me out. Cause I know I could sometimes not explain things well, cause maybe I, maybe I just don't, you have a good sense of this stuff. I try, I'll try my best and I'll try to clear it up if you have any questions and um, yeah, um, I'll, I'll keep on trying to improve, but I will see you guys in the next video where, I'll, where I'm gonna go off and finish the last 10. So see you guys then.